Welcome to another installment in the re-uploads for the new subscribers. This video tells the story of yet another transition experienced in my teen years among the goths as well as alternative subcultures. We went from being called freaks and bullied for looking different, then from lambs to lions, and then looked upon with intrigue when the film The Craft was released. It gave a very pop culture look into the occult in a way that the mainstream audience could digest, and they ate it up. A side effect of that was that those who once ignored us, or even made fun of us, they suddenly wanted to hang out with us. I mean, it didn't help that to the ungoth eye, I happened to look just like Nancy, but it was a sudden and weird turn of events nonetheless, and this is how the release of the film The Craft affected me as a goth high schooler in the 90s. Enjoy. <laughs> a little bit different to you. Perhaps it's because I take your requests on board and I got a new microphone. I don't know about you, but I think it makes me sound ultra alluring. <coughs> now that we've gotten that out of the way. So I want to tell you a story about when The Craft had first come out. It was the very weekend it was released and how my freaking life in high school from that point on was never the same. As you probably have seen if you followed my channel for a while, this is what I looked like in high school. Now I had this god awful affliction to where I had the joker smile and when I say joker smile it is because everybody else used to make fun of me and say my god Angela you smile like the joker. Yeah I fucking know. So it's something I had to really train myself out of and now I don't do that so much anymore unless something is absolutely hilarious but you'll find me doing this because I'm kind of self conscious about it. But. Yes. So the fact that I had the joker smile, the same hair, the same makeup, the same clothes as Nancy's character in the craft did not help my case in any way because if you're not a goth, you look at me, you look at Nancy, and you don't see much differences. But what you do see is a ton of similarities and you see basically the same person. And that is what everyone else saw when they looked at me. And that made a high school a very interesting experience to say the least. My friends and I, we were never really movie theater goers. And I think it was because we were so much into older films such as 80s movies that we weren't really interested much in what was coming out. Although the craft did definitely pique our interest, but not enough to go to the movie theater and see it. So the weekend of the film's debut, it came out on a Friday and we didn't go and see it. And Saturday afternoon, I took a walk up to the local pizzeria and I was going to meet my friends. And as I'm walking, I'm right about to turn into the shopping center where the pizzeria is. And I happen to turn and look to my right at the exact moment that a van passes and I make eye contact with the driver. And he looks at me with utter shock on his face and then pulls over. Now normally this is not a very good thing, but luckily it's broad daylight, I'm on a main road, so I have those things on my side. <laughs> he gets out of the car, as do his four passengers, and they said, oh my god, I can't believe we're seeing you right now. Sorry, do I know you? And then he proceeds to continue by saying, we went and saw the craft last night, and the whole time we're thinking, oh my god, that bad girl in the movie looks just like you. Again, do I know you? So I'm noticing that these guys are about my age and turns out that they went to my high school. Now the high school that I go to is, go to, like I'm still there. The high school that I went to is called Sachem and Sachem is one of the biggest high schools in the nation. And it's a high school that has a statistic that every day of your four years at Sachem, you're going to see a new face. You never really got to know a lot of people because it was just so damn big. However, Apparently, this rule does not apply if you are of the goth or alternative persuasion because then you stuck out like a sore thumb. This was still during a time where there was a lot of mystery surrounding goths because to mainstream America, we're still a very unknown subculture. So goths were really met with a mixed opinion all around because on one sense, we were really hypersexualized now because a lot of the guys saw it as something different, something dangerous, and we were perved on in not the most um, gentlemanly manners. And there was also the fact that a lot of people looked at us with awe. They thought that we were witches. And there was also 
the absolute terror, which I would come to find out that very fucking week at school. So this is an interesting story. I was in a fashion sewing and textiles class and normally we sat at our stations where we had our sewing machines but in the middle of the room there were these big tables and you can either sit at the tables or they were also used to draft patterns or cut patterns out etc so we had a substitute teacher that day and we weren't allowed to sew she didn't know if we were going to sew our hands to the fabric or whatever so i guess for safety purposes we were not allowed to sew that day so we were sat at the tables in the middle and i was bored out of my mind these are days before cell phones so you couldn't exactly pick up your phone text anybody or whatever so i pick up a pen and we have dressmakers pins and i'm sat there and what do you do when you're bored you fiddle with things and that's what i was doing i was fiddling and i pick up a pen and you know how they have the little holes in the caps to the pens well i was sticking the dressmakers pins through the little holes and when i stuck the pen in it would make the pins stand out this amused me and i did this three or four times and i just happened to look up to the girl sat directly in front of me to find this i'm just sort of like the fuck's wrong with you? So the next day, I am going down the very corridor to the class that she and I had had together, and I am met with the sounds of wailing, screaming, carrying on. Somebody's basically losing their shit. And I see in the distance that it's that girl, the one that had the look of shock on her face when I was just playing with my pen. And she's being held up by two friends on either side. And everybody in the hallway is staring, wondering what's going on. And as they pass me, her friend picks up a folder and puts it in front of her friend's face as if to block me from seeing her. I'm like, bitch, everybody else is looking. The difference is it make if I see. She wasn't blocking me from seeing her. She was shielding her friend from seeing me. So as my nosy ass is stood there and I'm just watching her being led down the end of the hallway, I'm immediately snapped out of it by my at the time best friend who said, oh my God, Angela, did you see what just happened? And I'm like, Yes, it's still happening. There are people in China that can hear that. And she's like, no, I mean, do you know why that's happening? And she knew I didn't know. And I'm like, no. She said, well, apparently she thinks that you're trying to kill her. What? She had a dream the previous night about me chasing her around a river with a spiky weapon, AKA, pen and dressmaker's pins. Apparently that scared her so much that she went and had a nightmare about it and was convinced that I was trying to kill her. And I'm not gonna lie, I laughed my ass off when I heard this because obviously as a goth, we do look different, but by today's standards, I'm pretty damn subdued. I'm not a scary looking person. Not only that, but in my head, I'm like, and she was never to be seen in fashion sewing and textiles again. She dropped the class. So to the All-American High School, looking very much like a person portrayed as someone who's capable of making things happen by way of practicing witchcraft, there was a certain stigma attached that attached itself to me as well because they automatically assumed that I too was involved in the very same thing. Now this would not be far from the truth. So as fledgling goths, myself and my friends, we didn't really, we didn't know any better. We assumed that practicing some form of, I guess, lack of a better way to put it, witchcraft went hand in hand with being a goth. It was just something that you had to do. But we really had no direction. We had books on Wicca, paganism, we chanted, we <laughs> practiced rituals, we actually cast spells, we had tarot cards, we would burn sage. There were all these varying things that we would do, but they really had no direction. It was just something that we were doing because we felt as if we really, we had to. As far as spell casting is concerned, something that stands out to me the absolute most is something that my friends and I had performed. And we performed a spell on my at the time boyfriend. Now I'm not supposed to be mentioning his name because he was featured in my last video and I specifically didn't mention his name. However, his name is integral to the story. So there goes that out the window. He was what you would consider a troubled youth. He was constantly in conflict with his parents. They were always getting into fights and he would always be running away. And the thing is, when he ran away, he would usually run away to my house. And if he didn't run away to my house, he would run away to a friend's house and call me. But that didn't happen this time. 
and hours went by, hadn't heard from him, and we decided we were going to perform a spell on him, and what we did was a tarot spell. And we all rallied up at my friend Jen's house, and a bunch of us sat around her dining room table and turned off the lights, candles lit, and we needed 13 red candles in order to perform the spell, as well as two tarot cards, Page of Wands and Knight of Cups that would be our significators. What I didn't realize is that I was doing a love spell. So laid the cards down, lit the candles, and as I performed the incantation and said the final as I will it so shall it be, and snuffed out, you couldn't blow them out, and snuffed out the 13th red candle, my beeper goes off. And I look at it, and it says 31003. Okay, throw it down. Obviously, I'm not in the right frame of mind. I'm not thinking here. Now, these are in the days where you couldn't text anybody because you couldn't page anyone letters. You can only page them numbers. When you send somebody a page, you put in your phone number, and they know to call that number back. Now, Sometimes you could find numbers that resembled letters and then send people little coded messages. You could write boobies, for example. But with this, when I threw my pager down, it landed upside down. So 31003 said Eddie. That's his name. So as I snuffed out the 13th candle, my pager went off and it said his name scared the shit out of all of us. <laughs> and back to high school, I was known as Nancy or the craft girl until the very, very end. Even to this day, when I randomly would run into people from high school, they still think I can read their mind. I suppose there are worse things I can be remembered for. So I hope you enjoyed this baby bat memory trip. And um, until next time. <laughs>